Welcome to this first service of the new year as we gather on January 1st, 2023. You are likely joining worship from the comfort of your own home on Sunday morning or at some other time of your choosing. In any case, we are pleased that you have chosen to start the new year in worshiping with us. If you're an old timer, you will already know this. But if you're new to First United, you will discover that we won't tell you what to believe, but we will commit to walk with you on your spiritual journey. Our hope is to create a community of faith where all are welcome and encouraged to participate fully. Whether you're worshiping with us for the first time or one of many, it is our hope that you will feel the Spirit's presence and grow in your relationship to the three-in-one. Now, you might have noticed that I said, we hope you will feel the Spirit's presence, and that wasn't a slip of the tongue. Today, this service is brought to you through a team effort. Our team consists of myself, Susan Silverthorne, Gay Going, and Carrie Schmidt, and we have joined together to provide today's service while Ruth Lummox, our minister, is taking some well-deserved time away from work. Unless otherwise noted, the liturgy is ours, and it can be freely shared. Thanks goes out today to Audrey Dowler for sharing her musical talents on the piano and to Ruth Lummox, who has provided the technical support to record and post this service. As we gather today, we recognize that we are on lands that have been occupied for thousands of years by peoples of the plain, people who became those of the Sundance culture. And the land upon which we worship is now recognized as Treaty 6 territory and Métis Region 4, the ancestral and traditional territory of the Cree, Dene, Blackfoot, Soto, Nakoda, Sioux, as well as Métis people. We are grateful for the knowledge, traditional all knowledge keepers and elders who are still with us today and those who have gone before us. The Cree knowledge keepers tell us that at this time of year, when snow is on the ground, special stories can be told, and they can only be told when the snow covers the ground. These stories are about the trickster, Wisakichak, an adventurous and humorous character who is afforded prestige as a teacher to humankind. This reminds me that at this time of year, we might want to take some time to tell stories and consider some of life's lessons which our elders, both indigenous and settlers, can share. Now you're invited to take a deep breath and make space for the spirit. In a world of darkness, Christ lights the way. Christ has come giving us guidance for living a life that is full, fulfilling and imbued with love. Let's join together now in singing our first hymn, I Am the Light of the World, number 87 in Voices United. to do and be. 
to free the prisoner from all chains, to make the powerful care, to rebuild the nations with strength of goodwill, to see God's children everywhere. I am the light of the world. You people come and follow me. If you follow Please join with me now in our call to worship. You may want to just uh, use the words that are in bolded print, but since you're at home, you can choose to read in any fashion that you wish. Uh, this call to worship is from the United Church of Canada, Song of Faith. We find God made known in Jesus of Nazareth, and so we sing of God, the Christ, the Holy One embodied. We, we sing, sing of, of Jesus, a Jew, a Jew born to a woman in poverty, in a time of social upheaval and political oppression. He knew human joy and sorrow. So filled with the Holy Spirit was he that in him people experienced the presence of God among them. We, we sing, sing praise, praise to, to God, God incarnate. incarnate. Jesus announced the coming of God's reign, a commonwealth not of domination but of peace justice, and reconciliation. He healed the sick and fed the hungry. He forgave sins and freed those held captive by all manner of demonic powers. He crossed barriers of race, class, culture, and gender. He preached and practiced unconditional love, love of God, love of neighbor, love of friend, love of enemy. And, and he, he commanded, commanded his, his followers, followers to love one, one another as he, as had, he loved had loved them. By becoming flesh in Jesus, God makes all things new. In, in Jesus, Jesus' life, life teaching, teaching, and self-offering, God, God empowers, empowers us, us to, to live in love. love. Please join with me now in the opening prayer, again adapted from the Song of Faith. Holy, Holy One, one in, three, in three, we, we sing, sing your, your praise, praise for sending for Jesus, Jesus to show us the way and know, and know that, that you that call, call us to embody Christ's presence, presence in the world. In the world. We, confess we confess that the church, that the church has not, not always lived, lived up to your vision. vision. The, church the church requires, requires the, spirit the spirit to reorient it, helping it to live an emerging faith while honoring tradition, challenging it to live by grace rather than entitlement for we are called to be a blessing to the earth. Guide us as individuals and as a church body. Give us wisdom and strength to be the presence in the world that you would have us be. Amen. And now please join together in singing from Voices United, number 82, A Light is Gleaming. Sometimes the word of hope reminds us of our feelings. 
God is good. All the time. All the time. God is good. Happy New Year and also Merry Christmas. Happy New Year to you. Thank you. What are we doing here? Okay, well, just hang on a second. Um, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Carrie Schmidt, and um, I have been invited by Susan and Gay to, and Ruth to uh, help today. And this is Abraham. Hi! Abraham gets a little excited. Just a little bit. Ah! Okay. Whoa. Um, he is, he's my gorilla friend. Yep. And this is his first Christmas. Okay. So how was it? Um, it was awesome. Really? So what did, what did you do? We had presents, and there were lights, and there were trees, and we went, we went, to, see, um, we went to see the train. Woo. That was awesome. Okay. That was fantastic. And what else? I had, I got presents. Really? What kind of presents? Well, I'm from a place really warm, so I got lots of hats and mitts and stuff like that. Well, that was functional. That's really good. Um, so it sounds like it was really exciting. Oh, very, I barely slept. I was so excited. And I got to eat, like, chocolate. Really? I don't think you really ate chocolate. I, I wouldn't let you eat chocolate. Oh, someone gave you chocolate. Yeah, I can only imagine who did that. Okay. That was, you shouldn't have chocolate. But anyway, okay. You seem to be okay. I didn't get sick or nothing. Well, hardly ever. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, really exciting. So, what, what do you think your best present was? Um, mittens. Okay, well, that's, that's pretty good. Very, very good. Well, um, I brought you another present. Yeah. See, there's this one. Here, hang on a second. There's this one. This is really nice. Look, oh, it's exciting. I bet you there's cookies in it. Those have cookies. This is cookie tin. Cookie, cookie, cookie. Good. Yep. It's pretty. It's very pretty. It's shiny. Mmm, interesting. Very exciting. This is a Christmas present. That's just a paper bag. It is a paper bag. It's just a plain, simple paper bag. Yeah, that's just for groceries or recycling. Yeah, maybe. 
Maybe, but it's just a simple paper bag. Does that mean it might not have something good in it? This is a present. This, this one, this one is a good one. I want this one. Hmm. Well, you know, our reading today that we're going to listen to, it talks about, you know, Jesus is coming. And it was a pretty ordinary story, though, you know. What do you mean? Well, Mary and Joseph were really just traveling to go get taken for the census. They had to be counted. Yeah. They just took a donkey ride through the desert. And really, they stayed in an inn. And there wasn't no in any room in the inn. So they had to stay in the stable just because there wasn't any room. It'd be like us, you know, driving to Calgary and there's no hotel. All right? It's just going, traveling, and kind of normal. Mary was pregnant, and that was kind of a normal thing. It's really, really just an ordinary, normal thing. Not really exciting. I mean, excitement came, but it was kind of normal. Hmm, what do you mean? Well, and all the excitement and the celebration and the lights and the trains and the cookies and opening presents and being excited. Yeah, Santa came. Yeah, Santa came. But in all that celebrating, what did you celebrate? Um, yeah. What do you think? It was his birthday. Yeah. And it's good to celebrate his birthday. We want to be excited about it. But it was really, there's a bigger gift than just what we get and the lights and the trains and Santa. What do you mean? Well, this little baby came to give us hope and joy and peace and courage. But Jesus' whole life was about teaching us and reminding us how much God loves us. And that's forever. Not just two, two weeks at Christmas. And not, it doesn't stop in January. It's all the time. And it came in this little baby in a stable on just a regular night. Mary didn't know she was going to have him that night. Oh. Yeah, so maybe the ordinary, that's where we find God the most. That's where we see Jesus the most. Hmm. Yeah, I get that. That's nice. It is nice. The greatest gift is the truth that God loves us. All of us. Every one of us. That's what it's meant for. Me too? Absolutely you too even with all your hair. <laughs> so, do you want to say a prayer with me? Okay. All right. Let's everybody bow our heads. Dear God, holy creator, thank you so much for loving us so much that you shared your son, Jesus, to remind us of the great gift of your love today and every day. Amen. Amen. So can I know what's in the bag? Okay, I'll let you look at the bag. Hang on. It's heavy. Mm -hmm. It's really heavy. Bananas! There's bananas in the bag! Yeah, I thought you might like those. You know what? There's more than one I share with you. Well, that's really nice of you. Because that's what God's love is. It's meant to be shared. That's right. Even with bananas. Amen. God is good. God is good. All the time. All the time. All the time? God is good. Our first reading today is from the book of Isaiah, verses 7 through 9. And I'm reading today from the message. I'll make a list of God's gracious dealings, all the things God has done that need praising, all the generous bounties of God, God's great goodness to the family of Israel, compassion lavished, love extravagant. God said, without question, these are my people, my children who would never betray me. And so God became their savior. In all their troubles, God was troubled too. God didn't send someone else to help them. God did it himself, in person. Out of God's own love and pity, God redeemed them. God rescued them and carried them for a long, long time. Our second reading is from Matthew chapter 2, verses 13 to 23, 
from the message. After the scholars were gone, God's angel showed up again in Joseph's dream and commanded, get up, take the child and his mother and flee to Egypt. Stay until further notice. Herod is on the hunt for this child and wants to kill him. Joseph obeyed. He got up, took the child and his mother under the cover of darkness. They were out of town and well on their way by daylight. And they lived in Egypt until Herod's death. This Egyptian exile fulfilled what Hosea had preached. I called my son out of Egypt. Herod, when he realized that the scholars had tricked him, flew into a rage. He commanded the murder of every little boy two years old and under who lived in Bethlehem and its surrounding hills. He determined that age from information he'd gotten from the scholars. And that's when Jeremiah's sermon was fulfilled. A sound was heard in Ramah, weeping and much lament, Rachel weeping for her children, Rachel refusing all solace, her children gone, dead and buried. Later, when Herod died, God's angels appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt. Up, take the child and his mother and return to Israel. All those out to murder the child are dead. Joseph obeyed. He got up, took the child and his mother, and re-entered Israel. When he heard, though, that Archelaus had succeeded his father, Herod, as king in Judea, he was afraid to go there. But then Joseph directed in a dream to go to the hills of Galilee. On arrival, he settled in the village of Nazareth. And this move was a fulfillment of the prophetic words, he shall be called a Nazarene. We are part of this story. Hear what the Spirit is speaking to us. And now I ask that you will join us in singing our song after our gospel, Spirit, Open Me, from More Voices, number 79, and the words will be on your screen.
May the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O God. When the song of the angels is stilled, when the star in the sky is gone, when the kings and the shepherds have found their way home, the work of Christmas is begun. Joseph's work began well before the baby was born. He responded to a dream. He looked beyond the customs and requirements for marriage and took Mary as his wife, confident in the angel's voice and direction. His Christmas work continued as he responded to the angel's voice to flee from Bethlehem to Egypt and later to Nazareth. We don't know much about Joseph. He was a decent man, a carpenter by trade, of the lineage of David, a man steeped in the culture and teachings of the Hebrew scriptures. He trusted his faith to recognize angel voices as being from God and to follow their direction even when it meant defying the Roman governing power to protect a vulnerable new baby. Joseph was an ordinary man, attentive, attentive to God's voice and ready to go and to do, trusting God's call. Today's reading from Matthew, Matthew's Gospel, tells us that his actions were necessary to fulfill the words of the prophets. I question whether the events happened to fulfill the prophets' words or if the fulfilling of the prophets' words reinforced that this child, Jesus, was the long-awaited Messiah. Joseph knew that the power of the Roman Empire made life dangerous for anyone considered an enemy or even a threat. When Herod heard about this baby, born to the Jews, being referred to as Messiah, or Prince of Peace, the Son of God, or King of the Jews, those names were given only to leaders in the Roman hierarchy, and he reacted as a threatened and violent ruler would. His response was to have all male children in the region where Jesus was thought to be killed. Matthew's telling of this birth story is very different from the version told in Luke's Gospel. The focus in Matthew's version is on Joseph and his dilemma and on Herod and his attempts to destroy Jesus. Matthew's telling of the Christmas story clearly differentiates between forces for evil versus forces for good. Forces of power to dominate and control versus opportunities to transform to a different kind of life and a different future. As we move through this Christmas season each year, we're invited to explore again the influences that cause us to look at ways that dominate and control versus opportunities to transform our living and decision-making. As a white, educated, economically stable woman, probably past my middle age in years, I've been wondering what acts of loving I'm being called to, as well as what biases I carry and what limitations I impose on myself to influence the work of Christmas that I'm being invited to do. And so I'd like to share a few of the places where my thoughts have taken me. For the last year and more, our Bible study group has been exploring indigenous wisdom and spirituality, guided by the book Braiding Sweetgrass by Robin Wall Kimmerer, and fleshed out through our discussions of plants, bugs, birds, and all of creation's gifts. 
our respect for land and plants and animals, for the air we breathe and the water we drink, has grown as we realize how our lifestyle choices threaten and destroy nature's balance. Individually, we may not be able to stop the harm that human efforts to control and use the environment have created, but we continue to broaden our understanding of how our living and decision-making impact the health of our planet. Words like consumption, ownership, pesticide, fertilizer, fossil fuel, extinction, may make us squirm. While ways to reduce or advocate and respond, along with words like solar panels and clean and green energy, encourage us to look for new opportunities to transform. Maybe for some, the work of Christmas will take the, its form in more environmentally friendly ways of living each day. Colonization is a word that I've known and thought I understood since my early school days. As a student, I learned about the arrival of European explorers and settlers to this vast land and other countries around the world. Colonization was never presented or understood to be a destructive or damaging process. Any negative consequences to the land or its inhabitants was minimized or erased from our history books. It has only been in recent years that the devastating impact on Indigenous people, their language, their culture, the lands and resources has been acknowledged. As a descendant of the settler population, I've always taken for granted my right to be here, my right to own property, my access to resources, my expectation for safety and the services I need. I've been privileged to remain ignorant of the destruction caused and perpetuated by a dominant society that intentionally and sometimes unintentionally tried to destroy the culture and wisdom of the Indigenous people. I'm thankful that in recent years, colonization is beginning to be understood in ways that recognize the tragedy of power structures that occupy and seek to control by force and violence. I'm thankful for voices that stand up to dominant forces and persist in their calls for justice. I'm thankful to live in a time when reconciliation is a driving force toward justice for all people. Maybe the work of Christmas will be born anew in dismantling the results of our colonizing history. I picked up a book at the church titled, Wait, Is This Racist? A Guide to Becoming an Anti-Racist Church. The book explores some visible signs of racism and racist behaviors, but it focuses on more su subtle and unintentional acts. It offers suggestions to predominantly white congregations, as well as mixed race groups and visible minority congregations. <clears throat> Again, transformation can happen as we recognize how the dominant and minority cultures can share leadership and decision-making roles. Maybe the work of Christmas will take shape in building BIPOC relationships in new ways. BIPOC is an acronym sometimes used to refer to Black, Indigenous, and people of color, acknowledged as a minor minority segment of our society a group that cries out for justice 
when race, color, and cultural barriers challenge full inclusion. And finally, my thoughts took me on to some of the work being undertaken by Northern Spirit Regional Council on their journey to becoming an affirming region. Work over the last three years has helped congregations understand what it means to be an affirming, to be affirming, and what actions and adjustments need to be made to fully be inclusive of people of all sexual orientation and gender identities. This process is a long journey of love, discernment, and transformation. It may include looking at barriers of age, race, ability, economic status, class, and in particular, gender expression and sexuality. Northern Spirit Regional Council hopes to formally complete their work prior to our annual gathering in May of 2023. The work of Christmas will continue as congregations continue to live into the commitment to be fully inclusive. Joseph heard God's call to love in his dreams, and he protected a baby who changed our world. I've heard God's call to love in Bible study discussions, in books I've read, and in groups that encourage me to open my eyes. Maybe you've heard God's call to love when you help to feed the hungry, or when you listen to the birds and the rustling of the trees. All creation longs for God's loving hand. And opportunities to be that loving hand are everywhere. May you find your way to the work of Christmas as this holy season moves us forward to a new year of loving and caring and being God's loving hands. May it be so. Gracious God, God of light, God of life, God of all that is, you come to us in the darkness of the night and call us by name. Give us, we pray, the grace to hear you, the hope to see you, the love needed to mend a broken world. Help us to be your hands, your heart, your hope. Be with us, we pray, with those who suffer, with those who weep, with those struggling on this day. Speak to us, God, as to children ready to learn, so that as adults we trust your voice, Walk with us, light our path, and give us, we pray, your peace. Amen. We will now sing our Lord's Prayer from Voices United, number 959.
The United Church Mission and Service Fund offers many opportunities for people to respond to love's call. Your gifts will be put to work in areas where they are needed most. People facing the worst crisis of their lives urgently need our support. While some Ukrainian refugees are returning to Ukraine, over six million are still displaced and have no home to return to. COVID-19 cases are starting to rise again, and some countries still have little or no access to vaccines or boosters. In Africa, food prices are soaring, leaving 146 million people hungry. Entire communities in Pakistan are left without shelter, farmland, health care facilities, and basic necessities of life because of flooding and landslides. These are just a few of the examples around our world. And if you'd like to choose specifically where your donation goes, Gifts with Vision offers a variety of opportunities to assist vulnerable members of our communities with food, clothing, spiritual support, educational materials, healing spaces, and more. You can choose how your gift will be used by donating online at giftswithvision.ca. This initiative comes out at Christmas time, but it runs year round, so gifts can be made for birthdays, anniversaries, and any other gift giving event. During Advent, the United Church Mission and Service invited donations to support children's needs. One in six Canadian children do not have enough food to eat. Children's hospitals report a 100% increase in mental health-related admissions. Worldwide, four million children are being trafficked for labor and a child dies of malnutrition every 10 seconds. Mission and service dollars will be put to work immediately, helping children around the world in a number of critical ways. When you give and how you give is up to you. But know that your gifts will be put to work as soon as they are received, and every gift counts. And this year, if you'd like to make one more donation for your 2022 tax year, you have until January, 20, January 15th of 2023. If mission and service is already a part of your regular giving, thank you. But if you're looking for a new way to respond to Love's Call, please consider giving to the mission and service work. And now it's time to change the light. Although we change the light, it goes with us. We are called to be a blessing to the earth and as such can serve to keep Christ's light visible to others. And shall I tease you as Ruth does? <laughs> Please join with me now in saying the words of sending forth. In a world of darkness, Holy One, you light the way. You, you speak, speak to, to us, us through the, the wonders way. of creation. You speak to us through dreams and our inner thoughts and intuitions. You, you guide us when doors, doors open and, and when, when doors, doors close. close. Spirit, open our hearts. Give us clear sight to see the disenfranchised who suffer from the misuse of power. Spirit, Spirit inspire, inspire us, us to use power for good, harnessing, harnessing the power of people working in community and working for the good of all. Amen. Amen. 
You shall go out with joy and be led forth with peace. The mountains and the hills will break forth before you. There'll be shouts of joy while the trees of the field will clap, will clap their hands. And all the trees of the fields will clap their hands. The trees of the fields will clap their hands. The trees Mountains and the hills will break forth before you. There'll be shouts of joy. And all the trees of the field will clap, will clap their hands. And all the trees of the